I'm gonna give you nine of the keys to sports performance and we're gonna start right now. So in 2008, I opened up Garage Strength and I started in a 400 square foot garage. So we were in this tiny garage and that's where the name Garage Strength stems from. My parents' garage, they were kind enough to let me take over half of the garage. And then over time, we built into owning the entire garage where my parents lost everything. They had no more storage for their vehicles. All we had were two platforms, a squat rack, and a couple sets of dumbbells. We had virtually nothing. And I knew that this was something that I wanted to turn into, you know, my dream was to create this crazy sports performance center. And so the first key lessons that I learned as a coach go back to, you know, that time frame. What did I have to do to develop freak athletes? That's all I kept thinking about was how could I develop freaks so that in turn, there'd be word of mouth locally. And if we could develop enough freaks, enough state champions, kids that could go on and, and wrestle or play football at the collegiate level, well now word of mouth, more people would come start to train with me and we would grow as a company, as a business. That was the, the rudimentary start. So those first three key lessons out of those nine were one, starting with better communication, understanding what future pacing is and establishing goals for kids, talking to athletes of all walks of life and informing them that you believe in them, that you believe in their capability and getting them to show up frequently. I think one of the best things that I did at that time was I basically got everybody's cell phone and if they didn't show up four to five days a week, I was texting them, where are you? Why aren't you coming in? Why aren't you training? We've got to work on this. So you want to be a state champion? You want to be an all-state football player? You want to be a, you know, an all-state swimmer? Whatever it was, I was constantly having kids get in the door, start training. Train all the time, train frequently. And so that was that first big lesson was communicate what your goals are and communicate what the athlete's goals are and then hold them accountable. That second key lesson was Focus on technical coordination. In an 800 square foot gym, you don't have a lot to work with. So you're only able to do specific movements that will transfer to other areas. Okay, so that means doing weightlifting variations, doing power cleans, doing power snatches, teaching athletes at a young age how to coordinate with high rate muscular actions and, and teaching them the benefit of the mobility, the technique, having a technical mindset, thinking logically, and then pushing those movements, pushing a snatch, pushing a clean, doing things like that to make our athletes more explosive because we didn't have a lot of space. And then that next big aspect was pushing absolute strength. So that's that third key lesson behind sports performance is you've got to push some absolute strength, especially with middle school and high school kids. Once they get into high school, you can really start to push, you know, step up, single leg squats. What you can do then is take those lessons from the first garage, right? The, the 800 square foot gym communicate clearly, set goals, set meetings with your athletes, establish what those goals are gonna be and where they want to go, and then teach them how to use technical coordination movements, and then teach them and push them with absolute strength movements so that they can then get stronger. And then by 2011, you know, we were fortunate enough to be in a situation where I'd saved up a whole bunch of money. I'd been living at home with my parents till I was like 26 or 27 uh, and saved up a bunch of money. And we ended up buying a, a farm with my sister where we moved into the barn. Okay, once we got into the barn, we were in about a 2,500 square foot gym. So now we had a little bit more space. We had a little bit more space to play with. And we had those three big lessons early on. We had some of that word of mouth success. We had some of that financial success, which enabled us to create a better gym, a better facility for our athletes. And that in turn brought in more athletes of different walks of life, of, of different uh, levels. We started to get athletes like Sam Mattis, like Nick Wazdowski during this time. Uh, we had a couple state champions in wrestling. We had a, you know, a bunch of all state athletes, a couple power five football players. But during this period, I really, really started to take some of my notes from training with Dr. Anatoly Bunderchuk and really started to lay out my thoughts and, and my organization of periodization. And that was one of those big things there is that I had a couple people start to work for me. So we were able to really start to experiment with everything. And that's where all of our periodization from 2011 all the way up to 2017, really the groundwork was laid during that time. We started to see, okay, during different phases of football season, of baseball season, of basketball season, of wrestling, what do we do in different periods? of the season, what do we do in the different periods 
out of season and the off season and how can we prepare our athletes the best so we really started to understand what programming was about and now because we had that extra space we had a little bit of extra room we could start to bring in more speed work and more plyometric work so that's going to be the next three tips is focusing on that programming slash periodization and then going deeper into plyometric work and speed work what days can we really start to build and develop plyometric work? So how can we get our athletes to jump more? Uh, how can we get them to absorb energy a little bit more effectively? What type of contrast training can we play around with? What type of experiments can we use with contrast methods to see if we do a technical coordination movement and then a jump, what happens? If we do an absolute strength movement and then a jump, what happens? You know, unilateral strength work with unilateral jumps, what happens? And we could really start to dig deeper into using plyometrics. So everybody should be using plyometrics inside their system to increase that power output, the, the twitchiness of their power output. And we also started to do more speed work because of that. So we have a bigger turf area. Uh, we can do more single leg bounds. We can do, you know, sled pushes to work on technique during the drive phase. And that was a big key factor during our time inside the barn is that now we understand and we develop and we experiment with periodization we take those plyometrics and those speed days and now you can learn and sit there and say all right so if i lay out uh, my program accordingly and we're training three to four days a week what days can we use speed stuff? What days can we use plyometrics? Should we do you know, a heavy day of technical coordination and absolute strength in the beginning of the week? And then on the tail end of the week, we can do some plyometric and, and speed-based work. And that's really where we started to figure that stuff out. By 2017, we moved into this current facility where we are now, 10,000 square foot facility. So think back all the way to 2008 when we were in my parents' garage, right? And, and it took all this time. I knew word of mouth was gonna be the biggest way for us to market. I knew that for us to transform to that dream facility, we had to just chip away at providing really high end sports performance training for everyone so that they could excel the best that they possibly could and achieve the most that they possibly could. And that would eventually lead us to more financial gains, which brought us to where we are right here in this current gym location. And this is where we can start to get into the weeds a little bit more. So the biggest thing in this location is we have more employees and we can test our athletes more. We can experiment more. We can look for what they're doing in different methods. And that's where we came up with the athlete reactive analysis. Okay, so the athlete reactive analysis is taking your athletes and bucketing them on how they engage with you socially. How do they engage with you when you provide a cue? How do they react when they have a fail? How do they react when they're criticized? How do they react in different situations so that you know how to approach them properly so that you can elicit the best response possible. So we have the type one athlete, which is a Zen, a type two athlete, which is a social athlete, and a type three athlete, which is more of that meathead. And we started to take those buckets and really develop now our programs that we had, our periodization that we had developed in the barn. And now we can take those pieces of the athlete reactive analysis and implement that at different points based off the athlete type, type one, type two, type three, and how they react to different types of stimulus, different types of fatigue, different types of stress, okay? And then that led into even more testing where we started to really learn from different high-end sports scientists. We wanted to see what people out in the outside world we're doing. I'm sort of stuck in this bubble here at Garage Strength, but then we could learn about dynamic trunk control and how that could, in essence, improve plyometric work, improve speed, improve even transfer of training with technical coordination. So dynamic trunk control, along with the athlete reactive analysis are our seventh and eighth key factors behind sports performance and how that leads to greater development. And then finally, we really were able to play around with you, know, having a sauna here on site playing around with more high-end nutrition, using earth-fed muscle supplements to try and get better reaction with protein. What's happening when we're supplementing creatine? Are you getting better sleep you know, with, with our ZMA? And so we could play around with those tests and now see, all right, when we're recovering with the sauna, when we're eating this amount of protein, you know, one pound or 1.2 grams of protein per pound of body weight, when we start to play around with that, how much sleep are we getting? How much time in the sauna are you doing per week? 
how much mobility you're doing. Now we factor that in with dynamic trunk control and the athlete reactive analysis and the previous six lessons that we learned at the barn and at the garage. And now you've got those nine key lessons. So when we figured all these nine keys out, then that comes down to how can you apply this as a coach? You can sit there and lay out your strength training program where you start with a day one, leg day. I wanna start with a technical coordination lift. So you do a clean, then you lead into, into an absolute strength lift. So you do a back squat. Then you lead into dynamic trunk control or accessory movements. So you, you wanna see how that can transfer over. So you might do something like sliding Cossack squats. You could do side band walks. You can do some other trunk stimulation movements. And then that might lead you into day two where you're gonna do a push press. Then maybe you're doing a bench press with some back work. And then you're doing some more supersets where you go dumbbell incline with pull-ups and now some more trunk work. And then that day three, you're applying into an athlete day. So now you're gonna focus on plyometric and speed work and see how that transfers. And this is all stuff that we have inside of our Sports Performance Bible. This is a book that we're putting out with a course. So there's a course companion where we have nine 30 minute discussions along with nine periods of application. Okay, so the course is 149 bucks. This book is 49 bucks. But during the first seven days, you can pick up the book and the course for 99 bucks along with a free technical course based around Olympic weightlifting. Some of the biggest complaints. I don't know how to teach technique. I don't know how to teach a snatch. I don't know how to teach a clean. Well, we're giving you a free technical course that now you can learn how to do that and then take all of the lessons that we learned from the original garage, all the lessons that we learned from the barn, all the lessons that we've learned from here, and along with that technical course, apply it directly to your athletes so that you guys can now conquer all of your dreams. You can help all of your athletes do crazy, crazy things. Go to the Olympics, go to the world championships, make it to the NFL, do everything that they work towards. And you have a blueprint now in the Sports Performance Bible. You can pick this up today at garagestrength.com. Now remember guys, always cultivate your power. Peace.